All right, it is Wednesday, hump day, April 9th, 10th, April 19th, April 19th. This is the Sofa Talk. Now, last time we were here, we were talking about the playoffs, dogs winning, nothing's changed. We were on the nothing's radio changed. yesterday, nothing's changed. Look, it's a long season. What did change is last week was spring break. The kids were off school for one week, and I always like to come with new content because that's what I do. I told you at the beginning of last year, I didn't want to be boring, and I didn't want to come with the same... I, look, am I ever boring? No. Never boring. And why? Do I ever talk about games? Very rarely. If I make you. I mean, I'll be in Vegas next week in Vegas with Brian Blessing at his studio. I remember we got in a huge... Uh, I wouldn't say huge. We just got in a dis disagreement a couple of years ago. He said... Why don't you break down these games? I said, let me tell you something, Brian. Everybody breaks down games. Everybody talks about games and pitchers and catchers and outfielders and quarterbacks and running backs and wide receivers. Everybody breaks down games, right? Mm -hmm. If you see a line, either side can win, whether it's a money line or whether it's a point spread. We are in the business of beating a line whether it's a money line or a point spread, right? Sure. I'm not in the business of fantasy football. He's in the business of fantasy football. I'm in the business of stop guessing and start winning. I'm not in the business of sitting back with a cool one and enjoying games. Do I watch games? No. Do I like sports? You do. Because your son likes sports. Yeah, but if it wasn't for him, I mean, I, I do sports, but do I like the act of no. sitting at a bar watching? No. Let's talk about the Milwaukee game. How many innings did that game go? With the full ride. No, no, the game in Vegas where I was sat with the team. 16. The last time I watched a baseball game, I was in Las Vegas at the SLS, at the hamburger joint. If you're from Vegas or you've been in Vegas, you know the, the, the bar next to the, the sports book. And I watched a Milwaukee Brewer game. And the client said, why don't you sit down and watch this baseball game with me? And I was texting him that I felt like taking off the fork and putting it in my throat. Because it didn't go nine innings. It went 16 innings. And he wasn't leaving until the game was over. It was one of those... Brutal 16 innings defensive matchups where one team would hit, make a run, you say, God, it's over. The other team would come back and they would tie it up and it just never ended. And this guy thought it was the greatest thing to sit with Johnny and watch this unfold. And I wanted to trust me, I know that I got the commentary from you every inning. Every inning. It was like putting it was it was the most painful thing. And I can imagine if you're a sports nut, you love this. I didn't love it. It's an investment. It's a day trade. It's all it is to me. I'm in the business of profit. I don't care what shape the ball is. Last night we had the over in the Pittsburgh game. We had plenty of dogs. Dogs were barking at the bank in a big way. And what I want to talk about is spring break. Let's get back to spring break. Mm -hmm. Kids were off for a week. And I went and I took them to see the Lego Batman movie. Now, I know you didn't see the Lego. So you don't know where I'm going with this. If you saw the Lego Batman movie, we're going to talk about what was so great about this movie and why it applies to sports betting. The concept... Hey, sweetie, did you see the Lego Batman movie? No. She didn't see it. You should go take your nieces, your nephews, the kids. Go take them, go take them to see the Lego Batman movie. What was so great about the Lego Batman movie, everybody's watching this video going, Can this, this guy's talking about the Lego Batman movie. Yes! Listen, 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 listen. You might learn something. First of all, I'm Batman. And if I'm Batman, he's Robin. So first thing you got to understand is all great movies that talk about superheroes, they all have a sidekick. They don't downgrade the sidekick. What that means is, what it teaches you really is the fundamental art of making money in the business place. No one is successful if they try to do everything on their own. 
You need a sidekick. You need someone to help you. You need someone to do things with you. And what that basically means is there's just too many games, too much information, too many clients to deal with on a daily basis, and you have to delegate responsibility. You know, it goes back to James Jones and the Dallas Cowboys. When he tried to be the owner and the coach, he failed. He failed miserably when he would leave the box and come down on the field. He had to let his people do his job. I am a good delegator. He's in charge of what he's in charge of, and I'm in charge of what I'm in charge of. Now, he knows I don't pick the games, which is why the clients go crazy, because they want the games at 9 in the morning, 10 in the morning, 11 in the morning. And the games, look, the first game today on Wednesday starts at 1.45 Eastern Standard Time, and we're doing this video at 12.30, and people want, want, have been wanting games since 10 in the morning. What's the rush? I'm not in a rush. Are you in a rush? No. The guys that I pay, they might call me at 1.30 for a game that starts at 1.45. And I realize some companies on Saturday and Sunday especially, they might be gone at 1 o'clock. Everybody has to run it their own way. But back to the Lego movie. Everyone needs someone to handle certain things and aspects, and especially in this business. You're talking about so many baseball games, 15 on average a day, plus you have the NBA playoffs, plus you have the NHL playoffs, plus you have international soccer. Mm -hmm. It is too much for not one person to analyze because I analyze nothing. I prognosticate nothing. I handicap nothing. Guys will call up and say, what makes you better than every other handicapping service? What do we handicap? Nothing. Pimlico Racetrack is five minutes from this office. We don't even handicap horses. We want horses, we call up the guy that does horses. Bottom line is, you have to rely on people just like you, if you're watching this, you need a Robin. You need someone to do the work for you. I need him to do what he does I need my sources to do what they do. The other thing is, what was really great about the movie is if you watch the dynamic between the Joker and Batman, everyone needs someone to hate on. It was great. Joker was mad because Batman wouldn't tell him he hated him. Batman wouldn't hate on him enough, and Joker basically said, well, I quit. And then they both realize, well, if Joker doesn't hate on him, they have no, they, there's no, there's no uh, story. And it would make for a boring match. There would be no action. So what that basically means on, what that basically means is, it's okay to hate your bookmaker. It's okay to psychologically have a war with your bookmaker. It's okay to be competitive with your bookmaker. And it's okay when you call here and you hate your bookmaker. Because you guys all say the same thing. I hate my bookmaker. I hate my bookmaker. I want to beat my bookmaker. I want to go to the Mirage. I want to go to the Stardust. I want to go here. I want to go there. I want to. I want to crush this bookmaker. I want to. I want to. I want to take money out of the guy's pocket. I want to do this. I want to do that. But what you have to understand is, if he's your joker, if the casino is your joker, and the casino is. Um, your enemy, or the local book is your enemy, or the offshore book is your enemy. That's okay. What's not okay is to have the book be your enemy without a Robin. And what that means is don't do it on your own. Don't be an island unto yourself. Don't think that you have all the answers. Don't think that you're going to accomplish success with the lack of information. Don't think that you're going to be able to figure out 15 MLB games a day, or you're going to be shaking your head saying, how are all these dogs winning, and I'm getting absolutely blasted. Man, the Yankees won eight in a row, and John put out the White Sox yesterday. Is he out of his mind? Well, how'd you do taking the Yankees? Streaks are made to be broken. Streaks are made to be broken. But I thought you said you are a streak player. Ah, you think it's that easy? 
You think it's that easy? You're going to just listen to what I say on the radio? Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely free. And I'm going to be like my buddy who just went to the Red Hot Chili Peppers concert and just give it away, give it away, give it away now. You must have lost your mind because I need a Robin. You need a Robin. And we here at the Insiders Club can bring you from the outside to the insider. Every Batman needs a Robin. And every superhero needs an enemy. If you can be your own superhero, the sports book is your enemy. Where's your Robin? That's information. And the way you're going to get that information is to pick up the phone and call. Come in from the outside, come into the inside, and stop trying to do this on your own. Otherwise, you just are going to be shaking your head saying, why me, why me, scratching your head, wondering how is it that the house always wins? Because what you then will understand is that trying to be an island unto yourself is no way to accomplish anything or get anything done. Anything you want to add, Robin? No, I mean, I, I think we covered all basis, and the reality is don't let your summer go by with the summer blues when the reality is we make more money in the summer than any other season combined. So with that being said, this is your hump day report. I have to play some muddy waters since you said summer blues. Good day and good luck. Good day and good luck.